Building a portfolio of stock dividends that can replace some or all of your paycheck during retirement could be a big goal for retirement savers. Now, of course, there are several benefits for living off of dividend paying stocks, including getting that steady income that we need, the creating the cash flow that you want. You never have to sell your shares because as you hold them, you're getting the dividends from there. This could also leave a lot of money for generational wealth, and it can be very tax efficient depending on what you want to do with it. Now, building a portfolio that pays you $50,000 a year, which we know is the annual salary in the United States, doesn't have to be incredibly complicated. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at one single high yield ETF that can turn $400 a month into over $50,000, that is right, in annual dividends, replacing your income in its entirety. Now to build this stream, of course, we are talking about the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF, or the, now this is one ETF that I do hold in my portfolio myself, and I hold it in a really big way. 30% of my investment portfolio is in the HD, which is the reason why I wanted to break it down. And a lot of people were kind of questioning the dividend and the reason why I'm using it. And I wanna show you and break it down exactly. Now the Schwab US Dividend ETF that tracks the Dow Jones US Dividend 100 Index. That is right, you are roughly having 100 high yield dividend paying stocks within this portfolio. So not only are you investing in one company and really one stock, you are investing in one ETF with hundred a hundred companies in there, which is kind of crazy. The stocks in the index have all paid dividends for at least 10 consecutive years, have a strong balance sheet and cash flow to support the dividends. That means it's going to continue in the future. And also with these companies, we have seen them increase the dividends through time. Now, high yield dividends and high yield growth rates are what we're looking at for strong dividend payers, which is exactly why we're buying and why we do invest in this one. Now, the biggest holdings in this are Texas Instrument, Amgen, uh, Lockheed Martin, we have PepsiCo, Chevron, Pfizer, Coca-Cola, Verizon, UPS, BlackRock. So looking at the U.S. dividends, and of course, this is U.S. dividends. This isn't anything internal or um, internationally. This is UN, U.S. dividends only, and all of these companies on this list I have heard of and I have seen in the news through the growth potential of these companies. When we break down the HD with the biggest holdings in the Swab U.S. dividend equity, number one is Texas Instrument, 2.6% dividend yield, Amgen, 2.9%, Lockheed Martin, 27 PepsiCo yields a 3% dividend return, Chevron's at 4, Pfizer at 5.9, Coca-Cola at 3.1, Verizon at a 6.7%, which is incredible, UPS, which is 4.4, BlackRock 2.5, and of course, these companies have been paying dividends for at least 10 years or more. Now, the mix of the high-yield dividend stocks and stocks with a good yield, good return, and a good growth potential, that is what we're looking for in the HD it combines or goes together to make a 3.46 trailing dividend yield. As mentioned, the stocks include typically increase their dividends every single year. Now, the big thing to think of when you think of this ETF, over the last five years, the fund's total dividend had a compounding growth annual rate of 11.8%. That is right, guys. We are sitting almost 12% over the last five years, which is kind of crazy because we know those were all the COVID years. While dividends are likely grow at that rate every single year, we are still seeing an exceptional growth rate, especially exceeding inflation. Everything you invest in, everything you're putting money into, you want to make sure that you're hedging out inflation. And of course, with it comes to the HD, when it comes to the, some of these larger companies, a lot of the volatility is there and also the risk is kind of cut in half, if not more, because you are investing in those 100 companies. So then the question is, how could $400 a month generate $50,000 in annual dividends? We are going to go ahead and break this down. Now, of course, the HDS produced an annualized return of 12.83%. That is right, just south of 13% since its inception in 2011. So you're talking, what, 13 years at this point? We have seen almost a 13% return with this ETF which is kind of crazy. Um, investors shouldn't expect those kind of returns. And of course, past performance will not really dictate what comes in the future, but it could. You know, there's always a possibility. Even looking at the HD was around 14.6. So a little bit better than we've seen on this one, but still doing incredibly well. And of course, with this one, we are looking for income. That is really one of the biggest things. So when you look at wrong, long running dividend focused funds, annual return is about 8.5%, which of course includes dividends, 
which is why this one is about a 5% capital appreciation holding the HD and again, why I do hold it in my portfolio. So let's break it down, putting $400 into the Schwab ETF month after month, reinvesting the dividends, you'd eventually build a mammoth portfolio, which I know a lot of people kind of look at. With a steady growth, they're even gonna use an 8.5% per year, which again, is a little bit more on the conservative side than what we've seen for this. So when you start breaking it down mathematically, one year you're putting a little over $5,000 in there, you're gonna get about $174 back. You amplify doing that 5,000 every year. When you get to five years, you're getting about 1,000 dividends. You got about 30K invested after five years. When we get to 10 years, you're about $75,000 invested. You're seeing $2,600 a month. For most of us, that is way over our regular mortgage payments. You could wrap up your mortgage payment, probably a car plus your insurance, maybe cell phone bill, a couple other things in 10 years that are covered entirely in dividends, never having to touch the original principal, which is the huge thing. Then you start getting into 15 years, 141,000 in the account right now, $5,000 a month, that's right. For majority of Americans, you can cover every single expense you have in your life, making $5,000 a month in dividends. Then we get up to 20 years. Now the snowball is starting to roll. At 20 years, you got $242,000 there with making $8,400 a month. 25 years, you're at $400,000. You are yielding $14,000 in dividends a year, which again is kind of crazy. So let's break it down by the years and see exactly how we're making this dividend work. Now in year one, putting in about $5,000. Remember, we're putting in $400 a month during this time frame. So theoretical dividends, $174. So you're putting a little in there. You might've seen some growth appreciation. You're also getting a little bit back in dividends. Five years, the balance is about $30,000 that we have in there. Now you're looking at $1,000 that you're picking up in dividends, which again is kind of crazy thinking about you're getting $1,000 for free for doing absolutely nothing short of putting money away. 10 years is where we really start seeing the movement. 10 years, you're at $74,000 in there making $2,500, which again, you're starting to see where the snowball is going. 15 years, you're at $141,000. You're making $5,000. That is right, $5,000 a year for doing absolutely nothing. Fast forward to 20 years, $242,000 in the HD. You're looking at $8,400 in dividends. For most people, this can cover a lot of the bills, especially when you start breaking it down into a monthly where if you're getting you know, a couple hundred dollars extra every single month, I know we're reinvesting it, but if there was a point where you needed it or wanted to turn it on, you could have access to some additional cash flow. 25 years, you're looking at almost $400,000 in here, making $13,659. We get into 30 years, you're at $623,000 invested in here at only $400 a month. You've kept it consistent for 30 years. You're making $22,000 a year, which again, very, very good supplement when it comes to retirement plan. 35 years, you're at $967,000. 33,459 is coming in every single year. And then of course, by the time you reach 40 years, so from the point of let's say being 20 years old, up into the point of being 60 years old, you are now making $5,100 per year, which means to supplement Social Security as you're getting ready for retirement, you're making $51,000 in the HD without ever touching your $1.5 million that you have in there, meaning when it comes to generational wealth, it is gonna be kind of crazy. Now, there are some very important things to know. First of all, all of the uh, returns or everything we talked about is based on estimations. There is no, you can't really predict the future or we'd all be millionaires. Now, of course, this is a lot of large cap value stocks that are held in the HD. We also know that this HD does rebalance every single year and we did see it rebalance not too long ago and the yield actually came back a little bit, little bit um, better. Long-term investors should consider whether the $50,000 in dividends is really sufficient for retirement. And of course, $50,000 today is not gonna be the same when you think about it in 40 years with everything being equal. Now, the big thing to remember with this and the way that I look at it is when you look at dividends and when you look at dividend ETFs, they are an integral part of your portfolio. So this is where I kind of break it out. So let's say you're the 20 to 40, 20 to 50 years old. You're really reliant on growth. You're looking at 10, 20, 30 years of growth, meaning that a majority of your ETFs are gonna be held in heavy growth ETFs, 
which is where you're going to earn your growth. You're going to earn essentially the most bang for your buck, getting into those heavy growth, those heavy tech stocks, a lot of that to get growth while you're still younger. Again, you're looking at 10, 20, 30 years. By the time you're 50, a lot of people start making a little bit of a transition. You have a core ETF, you have your growth ETF, and then you do have the dividend ETF at that point, which is the reason why when I look at my portfolio itself, I have 50%, which is based literally in growth. For my age, I wanna keep it in growth. I still have probably 20 years till retirement. If we're looking at actual retirement age of 65, those 20 years, I wanna see some solid growth. I also do carry 25% in a core, which is my VOO. The S&P 500, 25% of my income or my investment is in there. And then of course, the final 25% of my portfolio is in the HD. Now, of course, I'm not putting $400 in there a month, depending on the month and how it is breaking up. But my plan is when it comes to ETF investing and when it comes to the dividends is as we get closer to retirement, once we see those massive years of growth, shifting a majority of the income into something similar to the SEHD or even into the HD and really having a big paycheck that I can get on a monthly basis or on a quarterly basis with this one, using the dividend income to supplement my social security, meaning the money that I have in the investment accounts, I am never going to have to touch it is going to be left to my kids. This is going to be left to my grandkids. It is going to be generational wealth that we're building with this ETF, meaning that, again, I can take off some of the dividends, the annual dividends that are coming in. And of course, we are not touching the principal that is in there. And hopefully at that point, the principal still does grow exponentially, meaning that when I am done, I am no longer here. The money that is going to be going to my kids is going to be a very large bucket of money. All right, guys, so that is going to do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.